the NDC was in power, and everything changed for the worse. Teachers' salaries were in arrears for nearly a year, with only a fraction given. Inflation was on the rise. Then my parents were ripped off by a microfinance company. They couldn't afford to send me to SHS. Dumso became a lifestyle. But in 2017, hey, hope was restored. The economy improved and I received free SHS. My father received support from planting for food and jobs. Dubso was over. Then came Nako with jobs. One district, one factory. Improved healthcare and emergency response. And more. Today, I have the chance to pay back the MPP for all the good they have done and protect our progress by voting for Nana Ekufu Ado. For I trust in him and in the MPP to create a solid future for all Ghanaians. This is the MPP life cycle. Put your hands together once again, ladies and gentlemen. It is my duty to protect you. And I will do just that. This is the precedent we are talking about. Leadership of service, protecting our progress, and transforming Ghana for all. The precedent you can trust Bold, decisive, courageous. Distinguished personalities, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Dua. Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Choboy! Let me see your four more years on top of you. Raise your hands and wave your flags. This is the man to deliver Ghana. His deliverables unprecedented. Four more years for Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. The president you can trust. Bold, decisive, and courageous. Leadership of service. Protecting our progress. Transforming Ghana for all. This is the man. He took this country from despair into that of hope and into a new generation. We're moving forward with Nanadu. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Let me still see your hands up. Four more years. The message is clear. Four more for Nanadu. Four more to do more for you. Four more to do more for you. And this is the man. This is the president you can trust. If he says this, he doesn't. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together once again. And thank you very much. Mr. President, the people of Ghana are ready to listen to you. Eminent clergy, vice president, second lady, the second president of the Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Ajikum Kufo, members of the Council of State, Oguamaihe Osaberi Marquisiata II, Chief of Staff of the Office of the President and officials of the Presidency, Central Regional Minister and your Deputy, Senior Minister, 
ministers and deputy ministers of state, majority leader and members of parliament, the national chairman, national, regional and constituency officers of the New Patriotic Party, members of the New Patriotic Party National Council, chairman and members of the MPP Council of Elders, representatives of other political parties, traditional rulers, dean and members of the diplomatic corps, members and followers of the New Patriotic Party, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. It is a joy to be in this celebrated ancient city of Cape Coast, the capital of the central region, an appropriate launching of the NPP 2020 manifesto. We're doing so in a region that gave us a massive endorsement in 2016. For which we continue to be grateful and whose mandate we have done everything to fulfill. We are honored by the attendance of no less a personage than the traditional landlord, Osaberi Makusiata II, Ogwemahe, who has chosen to grace the occasion with his presence. Osaberi thank you for being here. Patriotic Party MPP presented to the Ghanaian people a manifesto that spelt out a program of what we would do in office when entrusted with power at the elections. We called it change, an agenda for jobs, creating prosperity, securing the peace. We have spent a lot of time and consulted widely, we were guided by the core values of our party in prioritizing the solutions to the many problems that faced our country. I said at the launch that a manifesto represented for me a solemn social contract between the electorate and the elected. I had entered into the contract by signing the document on my behalf and that of the MPP. By voting for us on 7 December 2016, the Ghanaian people had also signed their part of the contract, giving us the mandate to implement the ideas in the manifesto. I said I fully understood the consequence of putting my signature to a contract. I know that some people do not accord much worth to a manifesto, but I do. And we of the MPP have always taken our manifestos seriously because we believe politics is serious business and asking for the mandate of the people to govern is serious business. We believe the citizens must be treated with respect. Once given the mandate to govern, we are bound by the promises that we make to the good people of Ghana. And we set about translating the promises into concrete programs. I said, when we were asking for the mandate to govern, that I want a Ghana where government is accountable to the electorate, not with artists' impressions of projects and green books, but with cold facts and figures. Fellow Ghanaians, you would have noticed, therefore, that all the presentations that have been made today have gone into great detail in providing a clear accounting of what we have done in the three years and eight months we have been in office. I want to thank all the men and women, including the Vice President, who made these solid presentations. I take pride especially in two things 
that have characterized the implementation of our programs. We have succeeded at equitable, at equitable distribution, which means all parts of the country have been touched by our policies, and we have delivered value for money. I take pride in the fact the free SHS and free TVET have been delivered, and our young people and their parents and guardians know that they will no longer be forced to stop school at JHS level because of financial difficulties. It was not easily done, and so we intend to protect it and prevent any so-called review, another word for cancellation. We have no reason to believe the NDC presidential candidate's newly proclaimed conversion to free SH and free TVET. For eight years, he and his party were loud in their assertions that they did not believe in free SHS and free TVET. They did not like the idea, they rubbished it at every opportunity, and they proclaimed that it would destroy Ghana's educational system. When they were in office, they had a hard time trying to run even their watered-down version of their so-called progressively free education. Then the former president said he would review it, and now we hear him say it has come to stay. Excellency, please try another one. Your credibility on this one is zero. <laughs> free SHS and free TVET cannot be trusted in your hands. In much the same way, we would not risk putting agriculture under the NDC and its leader. They will once again leave the farmers on their own without the support that is helping to make farming the profitable and fulfilling business it should be. And why should anyone imagine that an NDC administration under the former president would treat businesses any differently from what they did the last time round? Fellow Ghanaians, in, in spite of the unexpected and dramatic entry into our lives by COVID-19 and the subsequent worldwide devastation, we can demonstrate that we have set the economy on a strong foundation and businesses will flourish. The virus has slowed us down, but it has not di diverted us from the path of growth we have put the country on. It is interesting to note that the NDC in opposition is not able to take the lead in doing some of the things that are most often done, first by parties in opposition. You might remember how long it took the NDC presidential candidate to find a running mate, and they have not yet got a manifesto. I wonder what will happen the day they have a government to run as well. Or maybe it is simply showing that the country, they do not attach much importance to a manifesto, nor should we expect that whatever is written in it will reflect their beliefs, which presupposes, of course, that they now have or hold on to any firm beliefs, instead of bending in the direction of whatever they think is currently fashionable. We wish them luck with their manifesto whenever they are done with it. We in the MPP know from whence we came. We have never had any identity crisis. And our manifesto always gives us the opportunity to reiterate our historic stand as the party of the rule of law, the party of good governance, the party of business, the party that builds and creates wealth 
the party of social justice, and the party that cares for every Ghanaian. In other words, it helps to believe in something, to spend time and energy to think it through, and to get passionate and competent people to lead in the implementation of the program. On the day of my acclamation as the presidential candidate of our party, for which I continue to express my deep gratitude to Almighty God and to the myriad of officials and faithful supporters of our great party, I said that there was a clear choice before our nation as the two main candidates could be adjudged on similar basis. The people of Ghana could decide who among the two had made a better job of governing our country as president. I know that the NDC presidential candidate, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, believes and says often that Ghanaians have a short memory. And he must hold strongly to this belief. Otherwise, I doubt he would have summoned the courage to be seeking another turn after the disaster that was his presidency. <laughs> Ghanaians may, might have short memories, but not short enough for us to have forgotten the broken down freezers, irons, and other household equipment thanks to the five years of Dumso. Our memories are not short enough to forget that the economy under him was such a wreck that there was a ban placed on all recruitment into our public services. Our memories are not short enough to forget that teachers taught for three years and were only paid for three months. Our memories are certainly not short enough to forget that he brought our entire financial services system to near collapse. I have heard him make the extraordinary claim that Ghana's economy was in, quote, tatters, not because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but because of mismanagement. I doubt that he can recognize a well-managed economy, even if it slapped him in the face. <laughs> Luckily for us, we do not have to rely on his judgment or assessment of the economy. But it's important to tell him, just in case there are others like him around, that Ghana is today in a position to be able to provide one hot meal for JHS3 students who, go, who are back in school in the midst of the pandemic, to pay for six months the water bills of all Ghanaians, to subsidize the electricity bills of all Ghanaians for three months. Indeed, we thank the Almighty that the pandemic did not strike under his presidency when there was no money in the national kitty to pay teachers and nurses allowances. We are very much aware of the realities of the times. We know the havoc that COVID-19 has wrecked on our economies and livelihoods. I've asked our party members to keep these sensibilities in their minds in all they do as they are about campaigning for votes. Adherence to the COVID-19 protocols means we cannot resort to the traditional methods of campaigning, and I urge all of us to obey strictly these rules. We cannot have the traditional crowds and the rallies, and whenever there are gatherings, we have to try to observe the social distancing rules. It has been said by the NDC presidential candidate that NPP policies lack sense. If running an emerging oil economy into the arms of the IMF because of indiscipline in the management of the public finances is sense, I'm happy that the NPP has another concept of sense. If having sense means cancelling teacher, trainee, and nurses' allowances is sense, 
I'm happy that the MPP has another concept of sense. If having sense means recording the worst economic management statistics of modern times with the lowest rate of growth of the last 30 years, I'm happy the MPP has another concept of sense. <laughs> having sense in the MPP means being able to take an economy growing at 3.4% to an economy that grew, on the average, for three successive years, at least 7% per year before the pandemic, and was rightly acknowledged as one of the best performing economies, not just in Africa, but also in the world. Having sense in the MPP means executing the program for planting for food and jobs, which has led to the revival of Ghanaian agriculture from the doldrums of the NDC years bringing in its wake bumper harvests and affordable food prices in our markets and exports of significant quantities of foodstuffs to our neighbors. Having sense in the MPP means implementing policies which, according to the latest Ghana Living Standards Survey, has re resulted in a decline in unemployment rates from 11.9% in 2015 to 7.3% in 2019. I am happy with and prefer the MPP's sense. Let me use this occasion to assure the Ghanaian people that as President of the Republic, I will do everything within my means to ensure the peace and stability of our country in the run-up to, during, and after the polls of 7 December 2020. The struggle of our forebears in the Dankwa Domo Buzia political tradition to construct a great sacrifice, a democratic, open, free system of government in Ghana will not be jeopardized by me. And I'm calling on all actors in the political space to join me to ensure the maintenance of the peace and stability of our country and to conduct ourselves in a manner devoid of violence and ethnocentrism. The Ghana project can best be achieved in unity, tolerance, and mutual respect. Fellow Ghanaians, the MPP has, in 2020, one target and one objective only. That is to secure, with your support and the blessing of the Almighty, in free, fair, peaceful, and transparent elections, another decisive victory on 7 December 2020. A victory that will give us a clear majority in Parliament and a first-round presidential victory and, and enable us to do four more years of advancing the peace, progress, and prosperity of our nation for you. We have an excellent message as set out in our manifesto, leadership of service, protecting our progress, transforming Ghana for all. And as eloquently articulated by that brilliant Ghanaian, Mohamedou Bawumia, my most esteemed running mate and vice president, which will protect our progress and continue down the path of social and economic transformation on which all Ghanaians are now embarked. Fellow Ghanaians, the battle remains the Lord's. It is four more years for Nana and the MPP to do more for you. May God bless the new Patriotic Party and us all, and may God bless our homeland Ghana and make a great 
and strong. I thank you for your attention. The president has spoken. Please be seated.